Hey everybody, it's Dr. J and let's talk about some chemistry. So today, yesterday, uh, we're talking about uh, stock solutions and dilutions and all that type of stuff today. So specifically, what is a stock solution? A stock solution is basically our chemicals are being stored in a concentrated form. So if you ever been in a lab, um, if you go in the back or if you're a student, if you go in the back of the lab, you've never seen this part, um, but basically, we have these stock solutions that are very, very concentrated, okay? Very concentrated. So because we have these concentrated solutions, we actually have to dilute these solutions in order for sometimes people to use them, okay? So for instance, in like your general chemistry labs, you're probably using diluted solutions that uh, your lab staff has diluted for you, okay? So let's talk about dilution. When I'm talking about dilution, I'm talking about we're just adding water to the solution to make it less concentrated. That's it. So we really don't want to work with like a super concentrated acid, right? So we're going to add some water and whatever in this case, water base, it doesn't really matter to dilute it. So that way you can work with it in your general chemistry type of lab type of settings. Okay. Now, in order to determine how much water we should add to your solution to make sure it's right, we're going to use what we call a dilution equation, which is M1V1 equals M2V2. Now, what does M stand for? That stands for molarity, and the V stands for volume, and then M2 and V2 is molarity and volume again. So depending, right, you're going to have your concentrated stuff over here and your diluted stuff over here. And of course, you're going to have to do some math here to determine what you need to do. So let's look down here, right? So I have everything lined up. Um, basically, we're going to talk about this problem. What do we need to make three liters of a 0.5 molar calcium chloride, right? From a 10 molar stock solution. So basically, we're going to have to use our M1V1 equals M2V2 equation here. Now, notice what they're asking, right? What do we need to make with so how are we how are we going to make three liters of a 0.5 molar calcium chloride solution all right so this is what we're trying to make and we have our concentrated stock solution that's 10 molar so whenever we're using this dilution equation we're always using this equation to figure out well how much you know in this case and this question is asking well how much stock solution do I need to use in order to get to three liters of a 0.5 molar concentration? So I'm going to use this equation like I mentioned before. And from here, we need to understand our variables. So this is where I said math is going to come and play some algebra here and there. So this three liters is going to be a volume. So in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's V1 or V2. We need to understand it's a volume, right? Because Basically, M1V1 could be my concentrated solution, and M2V2 can be my diluted solution, or M1V1 could be my diluted solution, and M2V2 could be my concentrated solution. It doesn't really matter. You just need to know that which one goes with which, okay? So, in this case, I'm going to solve for V1, okay? The reason why I'm solving for V1 is because um, I'm missing my volume here. I'm trying to see how much volume of my stock solution I need because I have a volume and then I have two molarities, right? But I don't have that volume of my stock solution. So I'm solving for V1. And then how are we solving for V1 again? Once again, it's just standard math. Remember that we need to divide our M1 to get our variable by itself. Isolate the variable, right? So M2, V2 over M1. And if we look at our question here, right, everything is given to us. M2 is saying that we need to make 0.5 molar. So that's going to be 0.5 my M2. And remember, V2 goes with that. So we're making 3 liters of this 0.5 solution. So we see 3 liters here. And then M1, we already know because we have a 10 molar stock solution. So we have all our variables. Now we just need to solve for V1. 0.5 times 3 divided by 10, and we're going to see that we're going to get 0.15 liters. Okay, so once again, units are key to make sure 
Um, and then in this case, just look at the units, right? We need to understand that molarity is multiplied over liters, and then we're in liters. So when we go to multiply, liters are going to be canceled here. And then when we divide this, right, moles are going to be canceled with our moles here. So leaving us with just liters, which we see here, all right? Now, another hint is that we're solving for volume, so we should understand that, well, it has to be a volume unit. We're not going to be left with moles, all right? So it has to be liters. So we have 0.15 liters. So what does this mean, Dr. J? Well, this means that I need 0.15 liters of a 10 molar stock solution in order to make a 3 liter solution of a 0.5 molar calcium chloride uh, concentration. Okay, so remember, remember, in this case, right, how, how are they exactly making this solution? Well, we're taking that 0.15 of our concentrated solution, right, and then we're basically filling the rest of it up with water. So that's how we're changing the concentration, right? That This is how filling it up with water, we're going to get 0.5. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. we're This 0.15 is just of our stock solution. Everything else right in this three liters will be water, okay? Now, here's a way to just double check. Um, what we're going to see here is that we should have the same amount of moles, basically. So if we have our stock solution at 10 molar times that by the 0.15 liters that we just currently found we're going to see that we have 1.5 moles and if we do the same thing right with 3 liters times 0.5 molar right we're going to see that we have 1.5 moles okay so this is just another way to double check now let's look at an example right say that we are in lab and we have six samples here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have a dye stock solution. All right. And in this dye stock solution, um, it's going to be in all six of my vials. Right. And in each one of my six vial samples, right, I have stock solution and then I have water. Now, the goal that I'm going to show you guys is we need to figure out the molarity. We need to figure out the molarity here. So we look at uh, sample one. Um, we're going to see that I have 0.5 mils of dye stock solution. So this is going to have the least amount of stock solution here. Then the rest of this will be 9.5 uh, milliliters of water. We look at two. I got one milliliter dye stock solution and nine, three, four, five, six, etc. All right. So as we go up, we're increasing our stock solution. And as we increase our stock solution, we're decreasing the amount of water we have. So let's figure out how we're going to find the molarity for all of these. So let's calculate the concentration of our stock solution. Now, in this example, right, we know what the, uh, in this case, we're given uh, uh, the stock solutions uh, uh, concentration in which is going to be 0.078 uh, grams per liter. So because we know this, uh, the stock solution in this particular example, I'm going to use that to help me find the molarity of my stock solution. So once again, the concentration, if it's ever asking for concentration, that basically means you need to convert it to moles over liters. Right now, it gives us in grams per liters. So basically, I'm just going to convert my grams to moles. So 0 0.0788 grams per liter. Now I'm going to multiply this by the molar mass. In this case, this is just an example, but um, say the molar mass is 496.44 grams, right? So now our grams will be canceled, leaving me with moles on top. And I'm going to see that my concentration for the stock solution is 1.59 times 10 to negative 4 moles per liter. So we know our concentration of our stock solution. How are we going to figure out the concentration, the molarity for each of our individual samples? Good question. So let's just do one example. Sample one. All right. Because once you figure out one, then you can do the rest of them. All right. And feel free to find the rest of them. Put in the chat too if you find sample two through six. But I'm just going to do the first one, sample one. So what is the concentration of sample one? 
a big hint here is that you're going to have to use M1, V1 equals M2, V2, right? Our dilution equation. So this is what we're going to have to do here. We're going to use our dilution equation, which in this case, we know that our M1, and remember, it doesn't really matter, but in this case, I'm going to set my M1 to be my stock solution. My stock solution, I just found out, is 1.59 times 10 to negative 4 uh, moles over liters, right? Now, if I'm looking at sample 1, let's look at sample 1. Sample 1, I have 0.5 milliliters of my dye stock solution, and then I have 9.5 milliliters of my water, okay? So this is very diluted. Now, how are we setting this up, Dr. J? So like I said, my M1 is my stock solution. So because my molarity is my stock solution for my M1, what should my V1 be? The volume of my stock solution. Remember, guys, it's kind of broken up, right? It's like your stock solution is on one side, your diluted solution is on the other side, basically, okay? Or whatever you're trying to find, okay? So in this case, I know my molarity for my stock solution, and then now I know my volume, which I get from my table my chart over here which is 0.5 milliliters so i'm going to convert that to 0 0.005 liters okay and once again i'm converting it to liters because this is going to save me time later on uh, because notice everything is already in liters so now that we have our m1 and v1 let's look over to our m2 v2 side so it's asking what's the concentration of my sample one. So since it's asking for the concentration, I know that I'm solving for molarity, right? This is what we're looking for, molarity, moles over liters. So this is my X, this is my variable. I don't know what that is. But I do know, right, that for my sample one, I do know the volume for my sample one. My volume is adding up my stock solution and my water. So in total for my sample one, I have 10 milliliters or 0 0.01 liters. Okay, so this is how much we have for our sample one. So once I have all of my things in place in my equation, right? I know my M1, I know my V1, I know my V2. I need to solve for M2 here, right? Because this is where we're trying to find molarity. So since I'm going to solve for my M2, I'm going to do this in the following, right? So basically, I just divided my V2 down here. So now I have my M1 times my V1 over my V2. And once I multiply and divide, I'm going to see that for my sample 1, the molarity is 8 times 10 to the negative 6 moles over liter. Okay, and this is for our sample 1. So, right now, if you want to, give it a shot. See if you can find samples 2 through 6. See if you can find samples 2 through 6.